So what I thought it'd be quite fun to do is try something that we've not actually tried before, and as to my knowledge, it's never been tried on Earth before. What we want to try and do is levitate a little droplet of beer. If I can get the... I'm just going to draw up some of the beer. Well, Kai is like a, it's a bit like an X. It's a, it's a Greek symbol, and it looks like that. So what it means to me, I mean, in physics it can mean a lot of things, but what it means to me, it means magnetic susceptibility. The symbol Chi uh, is used in connection with both uh, electric fields and magnetic fields. So if we put a little subscript with little e after it, that's the uh, electrical susceptibility. If we put a little m underneath it, that's the magnetic susceptibility. When we normally think of magnetic things, we normally think of you know, things like, like this magnet, like, the, like Percy the Penguin here, this fridge magnet. So there he is sticking to his, his piece of steel. But it turns out that actually everything is magnetic to a greater or lesser degree. So in fact, you and, 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 and me are magnetic as well. And this table is magnetic. And water is magnetic. Um, it's a slightly different form of magnetism. It's called diamagnetism. So this, this type of magnetism with Percy the Penguin is called ferromagnetism. It's much, much stronger. Now, in diamagnets... So I, my finger is diamagnetic. Diamagnets are repelled from magnetic fields. So Percy's magnet here is, is generating a magnetic field. So my finger should be repelled from this magnet. Um, and in fact it is. It's just that the force, the repulsive force, is so weak with diamagnets that I just can't feel it. But if we get a large enough magnet, then we can start to feel this diamagnetism. And so we can go next door and we'll see a magnet that can do exactly that. And in fact, the magnetic field uh, generated by that magnet is so large that the repulsive force between um, the magnet and, in this case, you know, a, a water droplet in this case, is large enough that um, it actually balances its own weight. So we can float it, we can levitate it in the magnet. Uh, and doing that, we can do essentially experiments um, looking at how things behave in weightlessness. So a levitated object uh, behaves as if it's weightless, in the same sense that um, an astronaut going around the Earth believes he is weightless. You know, some people like to keep their heads toward the ceiling and their feet on the floor in, in space. I'm, I tend to be kind of random. In fact, he's still in a, in a gravitational field. He's still in the gravitational field of the Earth. And we, we can do something very similar using this magnet. A lot of things I've been doing is actually looking at the behaviour of, of water inside a magnet, in particular what happens when you, you spin it very quickly and it, it forms some rather interesting shapes. So I won't go into that in any more, much more detail. But the other thing we can do is put in um, uh, you know, living organisms like bacteria and yeast and we can see how uh, they grow and develop in, in, in weightless conditions. So these are experiments which you would normally want to do on the space station. Um, but we can, do, we can do these experiments on the ground. We can see you know, how, how these organisms um, react to weightless conditions on the ground, and we can keep them in the magnet for days or even weeks at a time. Yeah, and, and for, you know, for a bit of fun, we've you know, levitated other objects like strawberries. I mean, strawberries, things like, um, well, you and me and, and strawberries, fruit and vegetables, that kind of thing, they all contain, of course, a lot of water. And we've got our magnet set up so that it will levitate water. Uh, so we're going into the, uh, the magnetic levitation lab now. And this, uh... In fact, when you, when you get to this yellow and black line, the, the, the magnetic field is a few times the Earth's magnetic field around here. And it rapidly increases as you get closer to the magnet until we get up to thousands of times the Earth's magnetic field. Um, so, in fact, the Earth's magnetic field is about 50 micro tesla. Inside that magnet, we've got 17 tesla. So it's, you know, the order of about a million times stronger. So what I thought it'd be quite fun to do is try something that we've not actually tried before. And as to my knowledge, it's never been tried on Earth before. What we want to try and do is levitate a little droplet of beer. So. Well, let me show. You. Let me just open the beer, and let's just show you what happens. If I can get there. So you can see that 
the beer, the bit where the beer is fizzy, and you can see that the, there are bubbles forming on the glass. So the little bubbles of carbon dioxide are nucleating on the surface of the glass. So what we think is, the hypothesis is, if we put this in the magnet, so if we put, the, if we put some beer in the magnet, we get it to levitate, we can, we can levitate the beer so that it doesn't have a container around it. And if it doesn't have a container around it, what, what do the bubbles nucleate on? So the, the idea is that probably what we might see is that there, there should be no fizzing. The, the beer shouldn't fizz. I think people have tried brewing beer on the space station. I'm not, I, I'm not sure, but I think a few years ago there was a, an experiment to try and brew beer. Well, no, I think I, it's a problem for astronauts, actually, because you know, they, it's a problem for them to burp, basically, because the bubbles don't go up. So what I'm going to do is then, I'm going to use this pipette, and I'm just going to draw up some of the beer. So you can see the beer in there. I should just say that this, this pipette is sterile, so I've taken some precautions. You normally are not allowed to take food and drink into labs, but I've made sure this is all, all sterile and so on. So, and what I'm going to do is then squeeze this bulb at the end and just inject the, the beer into the, uh, the, the magnetic trap, the place where the, the beer wants to levitate. So I can go and do that now. So there's a mirror on top. I mean, I have to take the mirror away to, to inject the beer into the magnet, but then I'll put this 45 degree mirror back again so you can, so you, Brady, can stand at the, the edge of the room and video down the, down the mirror and see down the ball. So there we go. So you've got some beer levitating for the first time ever <laughs> in the magnet. And I can say that some, there are some bubbles on the surface of the droplet of beer, but it doesn't seem to be fizzing. You can't get um, very close with your camera, but I've got a, a webcam. Um, that's better. In the interests of science, I'm now going to drink the, uh, the beer out of the magnet, just to make sure, of course, you understand that it's still fizzy. So, oh, so yeah. I'm going to go and drink the, I'll go and drink, there's another first, I'm going to drink, drink the beer out of the magnet. Still fizzy, yeah? It was still fizzy. Yeah.